Okay, today I'm going to talk about a uh, topic that was requested uh, in, the, in the comment section under my video. Somebody wanted to, somebody wanted me to do a video on a substance called natokinase or natokinase. Uh, natokinase is a supplement. It's available uh, through various sites. Uh, natokinase itself was discovered in 1987. And what natokinase is, it's an enzyme. An enzyme is something that catalyzes reactions. And natokinase is produced from a, uh, a, a fruit that's very popular in Japan. It's a soy-based uh, product called natto. Natto is uh, basically, what they do is they boil soybeans and they add a particular uh, bacteria called Bacillus subtilis to the uh, soybeans, and this produces natto. Uh, natto uh, is, uh, besides uh, producing, being the source of natokinase, natto itself contains various minerals such as calcium, copper, iron, magnesium, potassium, zinc, and also is a source of vitamin C. I've never tasted natto, but from what people tell me, it, it's, a, it's something, it's what you call an acquired taste. Uh, most people think it tastes horrible. But what we're, we're going to talk about here is natokinase because natokinase is a rather controversial supplement or substance uh, because it's the main function of uh, natokinase or the ba basic health benefit is that natokinase, uh, being an enzyme, it, uh, it's what they classified as a protease, meaning it digests protein. And in this particular instance, it's able to break down a protein produced in the body called fibrin, which is a uh, essential core substance of blood clots. So what, what the, the, the thinking is that nano, uh, nanokinase, by helping to digest fibrin, will uh, actually help prevent blood clots and, and complications and have another, uh, other effects related to cardiovascular disease prevention and protection. Uh, it, it, uh, in, in the body, natokinase activates other substances that are involved in blood clotting control, such as tissue plasminogen activator and urokinase. Uh, tissue uh, tissue, tissue pl plasminogen activator, if you have a stroke and you get to the hospital in time, very often they will inject a tissue plasminogen activator because it rapidly dissolves clots. There's certain types of strokes, which is, uh, for example, the um, I believe it's an ischemic stroke, is caused by a, a blood clot traveling into the brain, and blocking uh, the uh, you know blood flow, which can cause destruction of brain brain tissue. If they inject plasminogen activator in there fast enough, it'll die. It'll basically break up the clot and minimize brain damage. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see what else can I tell you. Uh, it, it, again, the main function of natokinase is to dissolve blood clots. There's some research showing that it, uh, it might, can blow up blood pressure by affecting, uh, by affecting what's known as the angiotensin-converting enzyme. There's certain drugs called ACE inhibitors that are prescribed by doctors to help control blood pressure. Uh, natokinase uh, might be a natural version of that. Uh, I don't want to go into the details of how the ACE... Uh, uh, substance works, angiotensin, angiotensin converting enzyme, suffice to say that it, uh, it converts certain substances that are produced in the kidneys uh, in, uh, in other tissues. <clears throat> it produce, uh, these things um, uh, uh, cause bl high blood pressure, a certain form of high blood pressure. <clears throat> so if you control ACE or angiotensin converting enzyme, you could lower blood pressure and natokinase uh, might be able to do that. Uh, uh, the um, people it works best for people who have had high blood pressure from from uh, uh, men, men who've had it for many years. Uh, that's who it seems to work best for. There's some research showing that natokinase can affect blood lipids such as cholesterol, low density lipoprotein, cholesterol, and triglyceride. But there's other studies showing this is where the controversy lies with natokinase. Some studies show that it can lower blood lipids. Others show that it has no effect whatsoever. Uh, as I said, the main function is to, is to uh, what they uh, provide what they call fibrolinolytic, 
and antithrombolytic properties, <coughs> meaning it dissolves blood clots. Now, blood clots are important, internal blood clots. I mean, you want to have clotting of the blood, otherwise you'd bleed to death. A uh, disease called hemophilia involves a situation, it's a genetic disease where the blood lacks clotting factors, uh, and you could bleed to death if you get a minor cut or something, you could wind up bleeding. To death. So clotting is important, but sometimes it happens inappropriately. Uh, for example, inside a blood vessel, uh, you have uh, uh, clots can form, or you can have plaques, which is um, uh, basically uh, hardening uh, of uh, cholesterol and other and other and calcium inside the uh, uh, arteries. It forms plaque. Uh, occasion uh, the, the plaque can uh, pieces of the plaque can break off, and uh, and and block a uh, artery in the heart and cause a heart attack. Or it can travel to the brain and cause a stroke. I don't think nanokinase would work on plaque, but it will work on blood clots that form. <clears throat> now, people who use high dose steroids, uh, anabolic steroids at high doses, uh, unfortunately, the steroids interfere with the natural fibrinolytic uh, uh, capacities of the body. So, what happens there is when you're taking high dose steroids, you have a greater chance of forming an internal clot, which can cause either a heart attack or a stroke. And this is one of the mechanisms of why some bodybuilders seem to get serious cardiovascular events. Uh, for those people, uh, you should, they should have, they have two choices. They can either take low dose aspirin, 81 milligrams a day, or so-called baby aspirin, or they can take natokinase. Uh, natokinase is probably a little bit safer than the as aspirin if you can use long term, because the aspirin in some people can cause internal bleeding, uh, which is another problem. A nanokinase, as far as I know, doesn't do that. <clears throat> there are some studies showing that nanokinase has antiplatelet. Platelets are little substances in the blood that are involved in the clotting plot process, uh, and it also uh, nanokinase also provides anticoagulant uh, uh, effects that supposedly this combination of antiplatelet and anticoagulant effects can help clear out arteries and, and slow the development of atherosclerosis. In fact, there was a study published in uh, 2022 in a journal called uh, Frontiers in Cardiovascular Medicine. The title of the, of the study is Effective Management of Atherosclerosis, Progress and Hyperlipidemia with Nanokinase a clinical study with 1,062 participants. Atherosclerosis, for those of you who don't, don't know what it is, it's the kind of the main uh, forerunner for cardiovascular disease. It involves a narrowing of the arteries because of a buildup of, cl uh, uh, of plaque and also an in increase or a hypertrophy of the smooth muscle that lines the arteries. The combination of increased smooth muscle thickness and plaque formation causes a narrowing of the arteries, and that's atherosclerosis. It has a very close connection with heart disease and, and stroke strokes. Uh, and this particular study was uh, interesting because it, it basically showed that not only was nanokinase effective as a uh, fibrinolytic and antithrombotic agent, meaning it was effective at, at blocking cl uh, internal clots, but it also effectively manage the progression of atherosclerosis. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> now what they're saying here is that, and this is where the real controversy is that uh, a lot of the studies, uh, for example, here's another one that I, that I, I, I found. This one's called Nanokinase Anthro Atherothrombotic Prevention Study. This is where they gave nanokinase for, uh, to t for 265 pe uh, people, an average age of 65.3. They gave him a dose of 2,000 fibrinolytic units, or FU, 2,000 fibrinolytic units of, uh, of, of uh, nanokinase. And they showed that uh, they did this for three years, and they found that no effect on atherosclerosis at all in healthy individuals at a low risk for uh, cardiovascular disease. Now, th now, this other study claims that, it can, uh, that nanokinase this one from the Frontiers in Cardiovascular Medicine <clears throat> claims that natokinase not only can, um, can uh, 
prevent blood clots that are associated with heart, uh, heart disease and strokes, but also actually slows the prevention and may even have a, a slight reversal effect on atherosclerosis, which be a, which would be a tremendous effect. Now, what's the difference? The difference between the studies is that the usual recommended dose of natokinase is 2,000 fibrolytic units a day, 2,000 units a day. That's what the usual recommendation is. But th in this study, they found the effective dose was 10,800 uh, fibrinolytic units a day, 10,800 units of, of, uh, of natokinase proved effective in not only uh, uh, reducing blood clots, but it also led to a significant reduction in the thickness of the carotid artery, the artery in the neck, uh, into uh, intima media and the size of the and also reduce car carotid plaque in the carotid artery. In fact, um, cr the the uh, the presence of plaque in arteries is often first observed in the carotid artery right here in the neck. And this study showed that a dose of 10,800 functional units of natokinase effectively reduced the plaque size in the in the uh, carotid arteries, which is a Really impressive uh, effect, uh, as you might expect, because of uh, of uh, natokinase's effect on clotting. It also may help have some neuroprotective effects and help to prevent stroke. Uh, as I said, uh, natokinase in, in certain individuals seems to help lower blood pressure. Blood pressure is the number one risk factor for strokes. Uh, and natokinase is associated with a drop in a substance uh, in a substance called von Willebrand factor which uh, it has to do with uh, 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 when you have a higher amounts of, of this stuff, it, it, it leads to, it's a higher risk for stroke. So the less von Willebrand factor you have, the lower the stroke risk, and nanokinase can lower that. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, there's some uh, individual, uh, the Alzheimer's disease, you have, in Alzheimer's disease, you have the uh, accumulation in the brain of two abnormal proteins, one is called beta amyloid. The other one's called tau. The, uh, the beta amyloid has uh, fibrils, they're called, in its structure, which uh, the fibrils uh, could be acted on by nanokinase. Uh, and the, some animal studies show that nanokinase can degrade amyloid fibers, fibrils. And again, these are fibrous proteins that bind together and are involved in the progression, progression of both Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Uh, nanokinase has also been shown to decrease acetylcholinesterase. This is an enzyme uh, that breaks down acetylcholine. Uh, acetylcholine is a brain neurotransmitter, especially uh, active in the area of the brain, having to do with memory and intelligence uh, in the hippocampus area. And this happens to be one of the first areas hit in the brain when you get Alzheimer's disease, uh, the current drugs used to treat Alzheimer's also work by uh, helping to decrease uh, the, uh, the activity of acetylcholinesterase, and uh, nanokinase apparently can do that naturally, as can another natural substance called huperzine A. So, uh, let's, what about side effects? So, you know, basically to sum it up, nanokinase is supposedly a cardiovascular prevention drug that helps prevent uh, heart disease by inhibiting clots that shouldn't be forming. Uh, and uh, they think that the uh, fact that a lot of people in Asian countries favor eating a lot of natto, which contains uh, natto kinase, uh, they think that that's one of the reasons why Asian countries have low rates of cardiovascular, comparatively low rates of uh, cardiovascular disease. Uh, there's no, as far as side effects, uh, there's been no serious side effects in many studies. Uh, some people have allergic reactions to anatokinase. Uh, anatokinase works by breaking up a clot, but unfortunately, when the clot is breaking apart, it, can, may, it may relocate and get stuck somewhere else. Uh, if it travels to the lungs, that could be like a pulmonary embolism. There's always a slight danger of that. Uh, in some people, natokinase can lower the blood pressure excessively, uh, and it, this can cause dizziness and possibly fainting. Uh, by, by lowering the clotting rate, uh, some people might get a little bit of uh, bleeding problems and 
br uh, excess bruising. Uh, but let me see, what else can I say? Well, like I say, the average dose, uh, the average dose recommended is 2,000 uh, functional units. But uh, uh, as I said, that the study that showed that it seems to have prevent or reverse atherosclerosis involved 10,800 units. So you have to be careful about that because of these possible side effects. Needless to say, because um, natokinase's main function is to break up blood clots by dissolving fibrin, you want to uh, be careful if you're taking any kind of uh, blood pressure medication because natokinase will have an added effect to blood pressure medication and could excessively lower blood pressure, causing you to either get dizzy or even faint because your, blood, your brain's not getting enough blood and oxygen. Uh, the uh, natokinase, you, sh uh, you have to be careful if you're taking any kind of blood thinner, such as Coumadin or Warfarin, or if you're taking Eliquis. A lot of people are on Eliquis because it's the number one medication to treat uh, a uh, abnormal heart rhythm called atrial fibrillation. So I think that's about it. Uh, let me see where I am here. Yeah, I think that covers it basically for natokinase. Um, uh, you know, the, 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 the final, let's say, say so, as far as natokinase actually reversing atherosclerosis is not really in yet. In other words, there's been this study like the study I mentioned. Uh, if there was more data to show that a natokinase can actually either slow or prevent or even possibly reverse atherosclerosis. Uh, and there's a, been a couple of videos on YouTube that have made that claim about natokinase, that it can actually reverse atherosclerosis, but that's based on nothing. Uh, like I said, larger doses do seem to slow down the progression of atherosclerosis, uh, but I don't think there's been enough studies to come to a definitive uh, conclusion about that yet. You'd have to have more human studies, uh, but you know I would suggest that if you're if you think you have a tendency to, let's say, form clots, or uh, if you're at let's say higher risk for cardiovascular disease, it, w it might not be a bad idea to use a natto kinase supplement, uh, or else of course your other option is to eat natto, which, again, you know, you have to have a good tolerance because natto is basically boiled soybeans with a, with a bacteria added. It's a fermented food, probably very good for the intestinal uh, microbiome, as all, form it, all fermented foods feed the bacteria in the intestinal microbiome, which is uh, very good for your health. And uh, certain organisms in the intestinal microbiome actually also have been shown to prevent cardiovascular disease, but that's another, that's another story for another day. Anyway, that's about it for natokinase. Uh, if you want any more information on, nutri on nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, uh, supplement science, uh, uh, fat reduction, fat loss techniques that work, women's health and fitness, all these topics are covered in my Applied Metabolics. comes out on the first of every month. It's anywhere from 30 to 45 pages, all in-depth information, evidence-based, which includes my over 60 years of personal experience and constant study. Uh, the, I don't think there's any rival uh, to applied metabolics in terms of the uh, amount of information that it provides. The, the, I've seen other digital publications, and I'm not going to say they're bad. Some of them have good information. Uh, the only negative thing I, I, I would say about some of these other digital publications is that they're not written by writers, and it shows. The writing is not very good. It's uh, kind of written in a, uh, you know, kind of a, a dissertation style. A lot of these people are, you know, PhD uh, people and uh, scientists or whatever, and they're not really writers, and it shows. They don't know how to write for the public. In contrast, I've been writing for popular uh, periodicals like magazines, for over, over 40 years. I know how to write for the public. If I have to use any scientific terms in applied metabolics, I translate it immediately so you don't have to reach for any medical dictionary or something like that. So subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, send me an email. I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics 
Facebook page where each day I post brand new information on nutrition, exercise, and general health. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only can send me short questions about anything they read in Applied Metabolics or anything that interests them in regard to nutrition and exercise, and I will answer their question as a kind of a bonus for their subscription to Applied Metabolics. Um, uh, uh, obviously, this service is restricted to only current uh, subscribers. Uh, so what else could I say? I think that's about it. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt the dog. Still don't have a dog. I'm going to get one. I'm, I'm going to get one. Uh, the dogs I've had, you have to understand, have all come to me. <clears throat> In other words, um, they were strays, dogs that really badly needed a home, you know, nobody wanted. These are these are the dogs that I've had as, as my companions. I don't want to call them pets because I... It's something about there's something derogatory about the term pet. So uh, you know, I have a feeling that uh, in the near future uh, there'll be an opportunity for uh, for for me to uh, save another dog, and that's when I'll have my dog. So anyway, take care. Thank you for listening.